saw in mechanical systems how fluids create drag force on objects passing through them. These rafts are being pulled along by drag force of the water. Boats are constantly fighting drag force because it's always trying to slow them down. But there's another kind of resistance that poses a problem for the fluids themselves. This is turbulence. It happens when fluids pass over rough surfaces, or in this case, rocks in the bottom of the river. Turbulent flow is usually something to avoid in fluid systems because it increases resistance and slows the fluid down. We saw the same thing in mechanical systems where turbulence increased drag force. A more desirable flow is laminar, or smooth flow. It offers the least resistance. Fluid resistance acts like friction because it slows the fluid down and causes a drop in pressure. The amount of resistance a fluid encounters depends on the size of the pipe, its length, and the number of turns and bends the fluid has to go through. Resistance also depends on how clean the pipe is. Naturally, any obstructions will increase resistance and interfere with the flow. Finding resistance in a fluid system is very similar to a mechanical system, force divided by rate. Except that in a fluid system, pressure acts like force to move the fluid. The resistance will affect the pressure by causing it to drop along the length of the pipes. So you end up with less pressure at the end of the pipe than what was put in at the beginning. Since pressure is what causes the fluid to move, a drop in pressure will affect the flow rate. So these are the factors that need to be measured to find fluid resistance. Pressure drop divided by flow rate. To help you remember the formula, think of QV as quantity of volume. When the pipes are extremely long, as in the case of a gas pipeline, resistance plays an important role. Ted Wadley is a technician who works at the Hersher Storage Facility of the Natural Gas Pipeline of America. His gigantic equipment does battle against fluid resistance. I'm standing here beside a compressor used for moving gas through a pipeline. The gas being compressed here has been delivered to us at this point from the Gulf of Mexico. This engine is approximately 2,700 horsepower. These compressors can move about 8 million cubic feet per hour. The Compression or recompression of gas is necessary because the resistance to flow as the gas is moving along the line drops the pressure of that gas. And approximately every 100 miles, there has to be a station like this to give that gas an extra boost, move it along the line. Resistance to flow of gas could be considered quite similar to resistance to flow of electrical current on a wire. It's simply inside of the pipe and not carried on a wire. Fluid resistance is not always a bad thing because it can be used to measure or control the flow of fluids in a pipe. A valve is simply an obstruction in the pipe that creates resistance to control the flow or shut it off altogether. There is another kind of resistance, the resistance within the fluid itself, called viscosity. Syrup is a highly viscous liquid. It resists flow, and it would be difficult to move through a pipe. For the syrup industry, this could be a problem, but there is a way around it. Fortunately, viscosity changes with temperature. Viscous liquids become thinner when they're warm. In the factory, syrup is heated, so it becomes less viscous, moves more easily, so it can be pumped into the bottles. The same is true of oil. The rating on a can is the measure of viscosity. A higher number means more viscosity or thicker oil. This becomes particularly important for people living in northern areas because when the temperature goes down in winter, the viscosity of oil increases. If you put a heavy oil into an engine, it becomes like syrup when it gets cold, making it very difficult to turn the engine over on a cold morning. 
Some people try to keep their engines warm overnight with electric heaters. Of course, if you forget to plug them in. Here's an example of fluid resistance being put to good use. A shock absorber uses resistance to cancel out the force of hitting a bump. The shock is filled with oil, which is moved from one chamber to another through holes in a piston. A combination of the viscosity of the oil and the turbulence created when the oil gushes through the holes creates a great deal of fluid resistance, which absorbs the shock from the bumps in the road. Fluid resistance is even important to your health. If deposits form on the inside of your veins and arteries, they increase the resistance of the blood flow, so your heart has to do more work. Resistance. Divide pressure drop by flow rate. And if a large pressure drop appears in a fluid system cutting down on the flow, chances are there's some kind of unwanted resistance in the pipe.